Man, I wish a beautiful girl would just fall from the sky right into my life. Saying such an unrealistic and silly thing, I close my young adult novel book. With 18 years of reading young adult novels under my belt, I can confidently say this. Stuff like what happens in young adult novels just doesn't happen in the real world. My name is Mike. I'm just an average office worker. Lately, my main concern is the boss at work who I just can't get along with. Hey, Mike, I told you to get this report done, but this is your task. Don't backtalk me. It's kind of like that. It feels more like he's bullying rather than just not getting along. The boss's name is Steve. If I remember right, he's in his late 50s. I've heard he has a son about my age. Despite holding a respectable position and supposedly fulfilling his role as a father, my impression is that he's both figuratively and literally a small man. For the record, Steve's height is around 5 feet 3 inches. Well, I'm around 5 feet 5 inches, so I can't really say much about others. Anyway, every time I come into work, getting reprimanded by Steve has become a major stressor. At times like these, I dive into watching TV shows or reading young adult novels once I'm home. I've always loved the world of fiction. These days, they have a term called teenage delusion phase, but up until middle school, I truly believed I was someone special, and I never doubted that I'd get a special beautiful girlfriend. But now, I'm turning 30 this year. The reality is clear. I'm not special or anything, just an average. The only regret I might have is not having a girlfriend yet. Most 30-year-olds are either married or at least have a significant other. But on closer thought, maybe I don't even fit that average mold. Maybe being average is actually pretty amazing. This is just too much. Lost in such thoughts, I attempted to escape reality by opening a game app on my cell phone. But just then, a notification pinged. It's rare for me to get messages, and when I checked the sender, it read Nina, making me jump up. The message said, Hey, it's been a while. I'm sorry for the sudden request, but Mike, could you pretend to be my boyfriend? I was taken aback by the unexpected content. Nina lived in the mansion right opposite my childhood home, and I've known her since we were in kindergarten. By the way, Nina's father is a real estate tycoon, super rich. So basically, I was being asked to play the role of a boyfriend by the daughter of a CEO, my childhood friend. Confused, I decided to hear her out. She pleaded for help, and begrudgingly, I agreed. A week later, I headed to the train station Nina had specified. Even though I've known her since we were kids, I felt a bit nervous. After all, it's been roughly 11 years since I last saw Nina when she moved to New York for college. We had a reunion recently, but she couldn't make it due to her busy work schedule. Nina's 30 now. She must have changed a bit in appearance, I thought. As I was waiting, I heard Mike and saw a woman energetically waving at me. Sorry, did I keep you waiting? No, not at all. There she was, transformed from a young girl to a full-grown woman. Nina looked even more beautiful than before and my nervousness peaked. You seem nervous, Mike. Is it because I've gotten more attractive? I, I'm not nervous. Don't get the wrong idea. The nervousness made me behave strangely. But it's true, Nina have grown up. However, things like her calling my name from afar and running towards me, or her sparkling smile, remained unchanged from when we were kids. I was anxious about how she might have changed, but I genuinely felt happy to see that my childhood friend was still the same in many ways. Shall we head to my parents' house? Yeah. Now, this is where the real challenge begins. I have to play the role of Nina's boyfriend, after all. To briefly explain the situation. As I mentioned earlier, Nina's father is in the real estate business. Recently, he seems to have confided in a close business associate the CEO of another company, 
saying, my daughter just can't seem to get a boyfriend. Then, the CEO offered, why not look among our employees, and apparently took the initiative. As it turns out, the department head's son was actively seeking a partner for marriage. After exchanging pictures, the young man seemed quite taken with Nina and desperately pleaded for a formal introduction with marriage in mind. That's the story. It's so infuriating when I think about it now. They made this decision without my knowledge, you know, typical of dad, always meddling like that. Nina is piffing out her cheeks and I couldn't help but give her a smile. It's true, Nina's father has always been overly concerned about his daughter. Anyways, we need to deter this match at all costs. I'm counting on you today. I'll do my best. You see, my role as Nina's boyfriend is to dissuade this prospective groom. Nina was upset that her dad had gone ahead and set up a matchmaking date on his own. However, her dad insisted that if she didn't have a boyfriend, he wanted her to meet the guy at least once, chalking it up to typical parental meddling. Feeling the pressure, Nina spontaneously lied, saying she already had a boyfriend. But when her dad questioned who this boyfriend was, she impulsively blurted out my name. Though her dad was quite suspicious, he relayed to the other guy's family that she was taken and suggested calling off the arranged meeting. But to their surprise, that guy kept insisting on at least one meeting, making it hard for her dad to decline his persistent requests. Concerned that she might be pursued by the suitor in the future, Nina decided the best way to get him to back off was to show him her boyfriend in person. Hence, she came up with this scheme to rope me in. As you've probably figured out by now, I'm about to get dragged into a complete mess. At first, I thought to decline, but then she called and pleaded, please, just this once. Over the phone, I felt my cheeks warm up, and I reluctantly agreed. To be honest, even if it's just pretending, the idea of being Nina's boyfriend wasn't all bad. Because I had been secretly in love with her for the longest time. But I never had the courage to confess. I was scared of ruining our childhood friendship. And every time I saw the grand mansion she lived in right across from my family home, I couldn't help but feel the stark difference between our worlds. So, I gave up on my feelings for Nina. Hey, why did you choose me to pretend to be your boyfriend? I asked, holding onto a faint hope. Nina gazed at the scenery and pondered. Um, I couldn't read her expression. Just felt like it. She said, flashing me a bright smile. I guess, there's no deeper reason to it, I thought, shrugging. There's no way Nina would have special feelings for someone like me. After that, we entered Nina's lavish mansion. Her dad was inside. I never would have guessed you two were dating. He commented, his expression a bit stiff. By the way, he doesn't know that I'm just pretending to be her boyfriend. I need to ensure he doesn't find out. Um, would it be okay if I greet her? Of course. I think my wife would be pleased as well. With Nina's father's permission, I went in front of the photograph of her mother and greeted her. Nina's mom passed away due to illness right after Nina graduated from high school. I had always known she had health issues, but I was truly shocked when she passed away. She was someone who took care of me since I was young. Whenever I visited their home, I remembered the warm smile of Nina's mom and how she would always welcome me with lots of treats. She was truly a wonderful person. Although I was close to Nina's mother, I hardly spoke to her father. He was often busy with work and I had a somewhat intimidating impression of him. I've heard that after losing his wife, Nina's dad became extremely protective of his daughter. I wonder what will happen if he finds out I'm just pretending to be her boyfriend. While these thoughts raced through my mind, the doorbell rang. Finally, the date she was supposed to meet had arrived. A wave of tension washed over me. Oddly enough, this date knew that Nina would be bringing her boyfriend today. He still wants to persuade Nina even in my presence. I thought, what an arrogant and persistent guy. 
He must really not know when to give up. I wondered what he looked like. Just then, the man for the matchmaking date and his father entered the room. To my shock, upon seeing the father, my eyes nearly popped out of their sockets. Steve, to my surprise, there stood Steve, my boss at the company with whom I often clashed. Mike, why the hell are you here? Steve looked just as taken aback. Could it be that Nina's father is close friends with the CEO of my company? Come to think of it, I had heard that the date was a manager's son. And Steve is a manager. I was completely dumbfounded by this unexpected encounter. No way, you're the boyfriend of this lady, you've got to be kidding, Steve exclaimed, his eyes bulging in disbelief. But then, Nina, standing beside me, suddenly grabbed my arm. It's true, Mike is my dear boyfriend. She told Steve with a serious tone and earnest eyes. It must be an act, but her convincing expression made my heart skip a beat. Then Steve's son said, so he's Nina's boyfriend, glaring at me. His eyes mirrored the condescending look I often received from Steve, making me recoil involuntarily. He had clearly inherited his father's shorter stature. After that, Steve's son began to talk about his own background. Apparently, he worked for a company with a higher income than the one both his father and I worked for and seemed to have a promising future. It felt like I was the one out of place in the situation. For a moment, I felt disheartened. However, Nina never let go of my arm. Please, reconsider. Mike is my subordinate, but honestly, he's quite useless. I bristled at Steve's words, but Nina seemed even more upset. Don't you dare insult my boyfriend. Mike has many wonderful qualities. Nina, who had been reserved till then, glared fiercely, leaving Steve and his son taken aback. It seems Nina really loves him. Suddenly, the son, looking very uncomfortable, said, excuse me, and left the house. Hey, wait, Steve called after him. As he did, he turned to me, giving me a warning glance. Remember this. I had a bad feeling about all this, and just then, Nina finally let go of my arm. I'm sorry for holding on for so long. Oh, it's okay. Seeing Nina's face turn red made me blush as well. Do you two plan on getting married? Nina's father suddenly asked, catching me off guard. Nina looked equally unsure about how to respond. Seeing our flustered reactions, Nina's father just said, never mind, and shrugged. It was my idea to bring up this matchmaking meeting. I'll apologize to the other party properly. With that, he went into his study. Thanks for playing the role of my boyfriend today. I'll treat you to something next time. Because we couldn't risk being overheard, we stepped outside. After walking for a bit, Nina turned to me again to express her gratitude. No worries. Well then. Well, bye for now. Even if it was just for a day, being Nina's boyfriend felt nice. It felt like my long-held crush was momentarily reciprocated. Yet, there was a lingering sense of regret. Maybe I still do have feelings for Nina. I glanced back in the direction Nina had gone and shook my head, trying to clear my thoughts. The pretend relationship ends here. A few days later, at the office, Steve glared at me with fierce eyes. I felt a negative vibe. But to add to my surprise, I received a sudden job transfer notice. To my shock, the new location was in a rural branch. This was essentially a demotion. Hey, Steve, what's the meaning of this? Steve smirked. You embarrassed my son and me the other day. I always thought you weren't suitable for this department, so I took the opportunity to send you where they are short-staffed. With that, he laughed heartily. Apparently, several employees had recently quit at that branch, and they were in dire need of staff. Steve had strongly recommended me for the position. So, I was pretty much forced into this demotion. Darn it. Why did this happen to me? No matter how unfair it felt, 
the decision was irreversible. Some days later, I was using my weekend break to prepare for the move. Even with the relocation allowance, moving expenses really hurt. As I lamented the situation, I ran out of packing tape. Stepping outside to buy more, I noticed a sleek black car parked in front of my old apartment. Wait, that car looks familiar. Oh, that's Nina's family's car. Just when I thought that, Nina stepped out of the back seat of the car, waving with a cheerful hey there. Nina, what are you doing here? Well, I heard some unsettling rumors. So, you're being transferred to the countryside, right, Mike? How did you? Turns out, she had received a call from the guy she was supposed to meet for a matchmaking date, who told her with a laugh, your boyfriend's getting transferred, serves him right. Hearing that, she rushed over to see me. I see, that guy's a piece of work. Sorry to get you involved in all of this. Why are you apologizing, Mike? It's my fault. I lied about having a boyfriend and dragged you into this. Nina bowed her head apologetically. You don't have to be so sorry. Believe it or not, I actually enjoyed playing your boyfriend. Hearing that, Nina's eyes widened. And she gave a big grin. Then, she dropped a bombshell. You know, Mike, I've always had feelings for you. I blurted out, what, in sheer disbelief. Nina blushed at my reaction. Do you remember our middle school reunion the other day? Yeah, but you weren't there, right? I was really disappointed when I didn't see Nina, but turns out she arrived later in the evening. At that time, because everyone was making me drink, I didn't even notice Nina's presence, and it seems Nina missed her chance to approach me. At that time, seeing you so drunk was really something, and I felt a bit sorry for you. But I never imagined that even in that state, I'd find my heart still fluttering for you. I guess I really do still have feelings for you, Mike." Nina said with a shy laugh. After that, perhaps due to her feelings of wanting to see me again, she told me that when she was approached for an arranged date, she impulsively lied, saying I was her boyfriend. That's why, when I previously asked her why did you mention my name, she felt embarrassed, fearing I'd realize her feelings for me. She quickly looked away and answered, just because. Apparently, her face turned beet red at that moment. You know, I think you and my dad have very similar personalities. What? Me and your dad? I was taken aback by her unexpected comment. Well, like how he's always fussing over others. Remember when I had a cold? You brought me ice cream and took care of me. Hearing Nina's story, I did recall such an incident. But I had clumsily spilled that ice cream on the floor, causing trouble for Nina's mom. Yet, Nina cheerfully pointed out that my clumsy side is just like her dad's. The reason Nina came today was to propose that I work at her father's place, given the inconvenience she had caused. Being in sales, I had some familiarity with real estate, which aligned with the job. The salary sounded quite appealing, promising a brighter future than my current position. But are you sure? Me working there? It's fine. Actually, I told my dad about our fake relationship. Wait, seriously. However, from what Nina shared, her father wasn't really mad about being deceived. Instead, he seemed to feel guilty for neglecting Nina's feelings and prematurely arranging a date for her. He also felt bad about causing me trouble and offering me a job was his idea, she said. I'm truly grateful for this offer. If you think I'm a fit, I'd love to work with you. When I said that, Nina gave me a delighted smile. After that, I began working at Nina's father's place. At the same time, I started seeing Nina more often, and before we knew it, we were dating. One day, Nina's father asked me, Are you two officially together now? Well, we are seeing each other, yes. I see. There's no end to the men wanting to date my daughter. Oh boy, what a hassle. Then, Nina's father turned to me and said, If someone comes around again, I might ask you to play her boyfriend again. 
He said it with a joking tone and grinned. It felt like the first time I saw a smile on Nina's father. Seeing that smile made me believe he had accepted my relationship with Nina. Oh yeah, there was this guy named Steve who was trying to get me transferred out. It seems Nina's father mentioned something about it to the CEO. Apparently, that led to Steve being transferred to a branch in a rural place, like Nebraska. The CEO, with a slightly frustrated look, responded to Nina's father, who jokingly said, Sorry for poaching your best employee. He then mentioned that he'd make sure Steve got some retraining. Hearing that story lifted a weight off my shoulders. Later on, Nina and I got hitched. But, to be honest, my life story feels like a mess. Being asked to play the part of a boyfriend for the childhood friend of the CEO's daughter, only to find out that her matchmaker's dad was the boss, I couldn't stand. Then, right when I was about to be transferred out of spite by the boss, my childhood friend turned up at my place. Turns out, she had feelings for me all along. I ended up working for her dad's company and eventually marrying her. It sounds like something straight out of a rom-com in a young adult novel. This kind of cliché plot. I bet it wouldn't get any traction. Publishers would surely be in the red with this story. But, let me just say it. I'm happy. And marrying my childhood friend is just the best.